Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Just a quick announcement to so go ahead and follow me on patreon.com forward slash bow and arrow tarot to uh, be part of the draw for the Dreams of Gaio tarot deck giveaway. This is, deck is going to be given away on August 15th by a random drawer of all of my patrons over on Patreon. And all I ask for is just $1 a month donation from you all um, on that site to help me be able to... Um, Get more of these tarot decks and oracle decks and do more unboxings and reviews and giveaways. All right. Um, but for right now, thank you so much and on to the video. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Bow and Arrow Tarot. Today, we're going to be doing the week 11th, August 11th to the 17th readings for the sign of Taurus. This is weekly forecasts for the sign of Taurus. We're going to get you three cards right out, three messages from your romance angels for you this week, Taurus. And then we will get right into pulling out your animal spirits, all right? So the first one out is unrequited love, all right? Cards taking a beat, and I, um, this could be the one. And we have past life relationships. So a lot of you are dealing with soulmate energy this week, possibly. Wow, this could be the one in unrequited love. Interesting. So let's get your um, angel, uh, excuse me, your spirit animals out. Now these are the uh, spirit animals that you're going to be dealing with, some of you, this week. They may resonate with you, they may not. You know, some of you may be dealing with these, uh, these type of individuals or individuals who are walking with these type of uh, spirit animals. But we're going to see... And now you may resonate with the spirit animals yourselves as well. All right, Taurus. All right. We have fox energy. Beautiful earth energy. All right. Fox. Very clever. Very wise. Dolphin, which is uh, water energy. That upside down triangle, of course, is uh, the alchemical symbol for water. And then we have elk. Now, elk just came out. This is the earth, earth element, um, earth elemental. Uh, elk just came out for Aries as well. All right. So that's quite interesting. So let's uh, review these animal spirits real quick. Uh, we have the fox here. Of course, the fox is earth energy. We have two earth and one water. Um, very smart, very strategic, very clever, you know, um, math, masters at planning, you know, strategizing, you know. The fox is, is, is uh, in an earthly way, right, very cunning, very wise also, you know. The fox has, you know, has, I want to say an intelligence, but also a wisdom that is... Uh, Sometimes ignored, you know, uh, just for the sake of, let me, let me put it to you this way. The fox is always looked at as being so wily, right? And so, um, clever, right? But the fox is also wise. He's a wise teacher. He teaches. He's a strong partner. The fox can be the, one of these mates. Um, in a partnership, the fox is the type of mate that's always going to be like a rock for you. They're always going to come up with a solution to your problems or, you know, depending on what you're going through, the fox is going to be quite grounded. Great businessmen, all right? Fox is going to be someone who has a lot of business acuity, maybe has developed quite a, a nice amount of abundance in their lives, right? The foxes are very quick to learn, you know? This is the type of person who goes into a business and may start as a dishwasher, and within a few years, they're the manager, and then they own the place, you know? They're quick learners, right? Um, and they're committed. When, they, when it comes to love relationships, they're committed. Um, they have a lifelong commitment, right? Um, they're not one to stray. The fox doesn't stray. Now, the dolphin is an animal of healing, all right? This is simply just beautiful healing energy. The dolphin is very intelligent, uh, very, um, very good at communicating um, feelings or understanding feelings, right? Empathy. 
a high amount of empathy the dolphin has. Um, and again, with it brings a lot of healing. When the dolphin is in your life, healing happens. Uh, you know, uh, communication is better. Communication along the lines of your emotions and your feelings is better. It's almost like you go through a catharsis sometimes with dolphin. The dolphin is there to support you through that. Um, again, water energy, right? Um, the dolphin is a very old creature as well. Again, very wise, but I want to say there is also an sense of just uh, an innate intelligence, right? We talk about, you know, they still haven't quite figured out the echo, the echo sounds and the, and the form of community. They know how dolphins communicate, but it's so sophisticated that it's not as in, in any way that scientists have been able to figure it out. You know, so there is an intelligence there with the dolphin as well. Um, and also with it brings, not only does healing come, light, clarity, blessings. The dolphin also bling, brings with it a lot of blessings in your life, right? Um, they're very se sensitive to subtle shifts and changes. Um, they love working on spiritual matters, right? They're healers. So they love uh, exploring the realm of the spirit, Um yeah, the dolphin is just a really kind of profound animal spirit, you know, that brings with it just so many good qualities, you know, blessings, healing, understanding, light, clarity, empathy, beautiful. Now we have the elk, and the elk is interesting because the elk is the strongest masculine card in terms of uh, masculine feminine energy in the deck. This is the father figure, right, the leader. Very strong father figure. Strong disciplinarian. Can be quite haughty, though. The elk can be quite full of himself sometimes. He can be a little too um, full of himself, I guess, right? Just to his way or the highway type of attitude. So you have to be careful. But for the most part, the elk is a very wise teacher in the terms of a father figure, right? In terms of a leader. Um, he's a protector, you know, the, the elk brings with it a sense of protecting the family, you know, taking care of the family. This is a headstrong, stable, resilient earth spirit, earth animal spirit, you know. Um, and very, you know, this kind of like the typical father figure in a sense of core values, having core values. You know, this is the father figure that's going to support his family no matter what. You can never tell them anything about their family. They're not going to turn their back on you. You know, they may be quite strong sometimes and maybe a bit too strong and too authoritarian, but they have your back. You know what I mean? All right. So we have two earth and one animal spirit up. Unrequited love, this could be the one in past life relationships. Now, they could, I just placed them, you know, as they came out. They could be vice versa, that you could relate, uh, resonate with some of them or all of them uh, in terms of the angel messages and or the animal spirits. But now we're going to pull out a series of forecasts for the week and see what it's all hitting for you Taurus is out there. Show me... Scenarios for Taurus, what Taurus might be going through this week for August 11th to the 17th. Give me affirmations, reaffirmations, warning signs. Show me. All right. Let's get out your forecast for the week. We have, oh, we're upside down. Five of Wands. The moon, oh, and a tower, wow, okay, arguing, right, arguing, a lot of uh, power struggle, right, rivalry, rivalry, just, you know, one-upmanship, you know, um, yeah, you're going through a lot this week, Taurus, right, and um, there's things happening that you don't know about, there's things happening behind the scenes, you feel like you're like kind of embroiled in this kind of struggle, right, but behind the scenes, things are happening, things are being said, um, people are doing things, right, and it's all going to come to a head this week with the tower, 
right? It's all going to come up this week. This could be a case of unrequited love in as much as somebody is pissed because you have a certain person in your life and they want them and something happens this week. Whatever the case may be, this fighting and 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 the moon, the element of the moon meaning, you know, almost like a it's going to happen out of the blue. This tower moment's going to come out of the blue for you this week or maybe not. Hopefully if you're resonating with this reading, this may give you a bit of a heads up. But certainly, Taurus, for those of you who have been kind of in a battle of wits or a, a rivalry with someone over, over another person, maybe, right? Um, and you don't really know what's been going on behind the scenes. Maybe they've actually been seeing each other behind the scenes and you don't know that. And there's this, but whatever the case may be, this is heavy, you know, this is a lot of heavy energy, but it's all going to come out this week. So, two of swords, sun. And the hero fan, right? So some of you are kind of in the land of indecision, two of swords. Something's come up and you're really, most recently you've had a decision that you needed to make. It could be a decision between two people, right? Um, it could be a decision of where to go, how to go forward with someone, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> excuse me. But what happens is this week the sun comes in and you get some clarity. With the sun, you know, you bring brings the truth, the clarity, um, understanding comes, self-confidence comes. You begin to understand how to make your decision uh, this week, right? Information comes into you. It could be dolphin, right? That dolphin energy or if you know somebody who's embodying that dolphin energy, they're bringing with it a bit of healing. The sun also heals as well. You know, because light, light brings healing, right? Uh, understanding can bring healing. And so this certainly happens this week. Um, and there, it's interesting, this could be something to do with your family, could certainly be to do with a soulmate relationship, but certainly um, there's issues here with your religious background or your cultural background. It could be that some of you are between perhaps your family and your person, you know, you may be with somebody that your family doesn't approve of, right? And you're having to make this decision. But this week, um, the information comes in, the clarity and the light comes in for you to be able to finally decide how to go forward. And oftentimes the message with Two of Swords is finding a balance, not making a decision. Sometimes you just can't make a decision, you know? Um, and in this case, that's that may very well be the case that you find the balance after this information and this clarity comes in for you this week between your person and perhaps your family, right, or your social group. Five of Pentacles, Ace of Swords, and you have Ten of Swords. Wow. So some of you, again, another power struggle, Five of Pentacles, but it's left you kind of paying the price, right? Um... You know, you and someone fell out and you guys, you know, you're the one who kind of had to had to, you know, take the hit <clears throat> financially. But this week, what happens is as a result of this, and there's probably quite a lot of hurt feelings here. Um, again, you know, fives is the number for power struggles. So this has been quite a difficult situation, pulling yourself kind of together, getting yourself maybe out of this kind of um this, the, the consequences of, of what the, uh, the fallout, you know what I mean? Um, the financial consequences that you're facing as a result of this fallout. But this week, information comes in, and you get a little victory this week with this information or this new opportunity, right? Um, and what happens is you're able to kind of finally put an end to this. You're able to put a line under this experience. It's the end of it. Ten of Swords marks the close of a very difficult time in your life. And this is the week that you finally get um, the Ace of Swords, the information, the, the new opportunity to kind of move forward and finally close this very difficult chapter of your life. Eight of Swords, <clears throat> Nine of Pentacles, wow, and Seven of Wands. Difficult week for you guys, uh, Taurus. Somebody is playing the victim here. Eight of Swords is my victim card, my gaslighting card. Somebody is really like, you know, they're, they're playing poor me. Um, they're acting like, you know, they may be trying to put you through a guilt trip of some kind, right? Um, <clears throat> Eight of Swords is that, you know, well, I, I can't, it, it's, it's my victim card because when people represent or present with this energy, it's like this, well, I can't do anything, you know, my hands were tied. You see the characters is tied and bound, but they've done this to themselves by the way they act. 
right? By the way they act and by their thought processes, um, by the ideas that they hold true. These are the type of people who are very obstinate. You can't talk to them. They're very opinionated. And then they become alienated as a result of their behavior, but they tend to blame everybody else for their mistakes, you know? Um, and interestingly enough, though, an opportunity comes in for you or you go towards an opportunity. You kind of leave this behind. I think you've had enough of this, right? You've had enough of uh, this kind of behavior. And interesting, I feel like, Taurus, you move more towards your future. You're embodying the Knight of Pentacles here. And you're moving towards your own abundance, right, and happiness in terms of your career or, or how, you're ma how you make your money, right, the material world. And you're ready to kind of leave a lot of this guilt tripping behind, whoever this person is who's been kind of putting you through that. Um, but as a result of your desire to move away, it's almost as if they then resort to all kinds of other tactics. Seven of Swords is very much like uh, hastiness. You know, the thief in the night, he's sneaky. He resorts to all kinds of underhanded tactics to get what he wants. And it's almost like some of you are dealing with someone who's very toxic. It's like if this, if this attitude didn't work and you leave, you're leaving, they see you're leaving anyway, then they try a whole nother level of toxicity, which is just cheating and lying. Here they were playing on your emotions and, your, and, and guilt tripping you, right? Gaslighting you. Here they're just out and out, like really just trying to throw obstacles in your way. Just take care. All of this, again, this is the weekly forecast. So some of you may be going through this this week and just, you know, have a heads up that this person is like going to try every kind of toxic tactic in the book to get you basically to stay with them, I think, to provide them the support. You're leaving and you're taking, before I move on, you're leaving and you're taking your money with, the, with you. So I feel like this person, not only do they want you, but they want the support that you provide. Fool shows up. Knight of Cups, wow. Some of you are starting a new relationship and a two of this. So some of you have someone who's coming in for you. And, um, you know, you're feeling very much like the fool in this, or vice versa. Your person could be the fool and you're the Knight of Cups going towards them. But in any case, this is kind of like a new relationship, right? Um, I think this is more you, though, really. I, I think you're feeling quite new, Some, but somebody is coming in for you. Somebody really wants to give you a, a cup a cup of love, show you their intentions. But the Knight of Cups is flaky. He's not very committed. You know, he can come in one day and, and say he loves you and mean it, and the next day leave and mean that too. So you feel quite, you know, the fool is always the quarant anyway, but when the fool shows up, it's the sense of feeling young, feeling like you're about to start something really new, and you're just not sure. You're still juggling here with the two of pentacles. This person comes in, and it's like, yeah, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure if I'm willing to give up you know, what I have already for you. And so you continue to maybe juggle them or you decide to continue to juggle them and maybe juggle somebody else at the same time. It could just be that their timing is a little bit off because you're about to make this big change. But whatever the case may be, this week you feel like you're you're being kind of put in a, in a situation where you're having to make a choice, you know? And it's because this person has come in quite forcefully to let you know that they want to be with you. Ten of Wands, Death, and Empress. Wow, okay. It's Ten of Wands, ready to lay down some burdens. Again, a lot of you are really closing a chapter in your lives right now, right? Ten of Wands is like you're ready to finally let go of a certain set of responsibilities that you've been burdening. These could be real responsibilities that, that you know, you're coming to the end of. It could be something like child support, right? These could also just be that you're awakening and coming to a point in your life where you're ready to, like, let go of a lot of baggage, right? But I do believe that this is a very... Um, this Ten of Wands is certainly connected to a very real set of responsibilities. I want to say that something is coming to an end in your life. There's a big change coming. And you're finally, uh, the change includes you being able to say goodbye to this, to this part of your life, right? This kind of really burdensome stage of your life. Whatever the burden was, whether it was, 
you know, emotional problems or responsibilities to, to someone where you had to maybe take care of someone and it was emotionally draining. Whatever the case may be, it's ending. And you are finally coming into a place where you can nurture yourself and you're getting back into your empress energy. You're going to be right back into, like healing yourself this is very this is very much a dolphin scenario certainly in terms of you know closing a stage a difficult stage and the very real changes that come with it and now healing you know certainly healing empress is all about healing and nurturing nourishing as well so it's quite beautiful let me throw one more maybe two more queen of cups Nine of Wands, and we have Eight of Wands. Okay, so some of you... Uh, some of you are ready, right? You're ready for... Uh, it's like you're ready to exchange your cup of love with someone. You're being really open about your feelings. You know, you're embodying Queen of Cups energy. Someone's kind of hemming and hawing. They're not really sure if they're ready to move forward with you. Um, and there's a lot of, like, other info that's coming in. There's a lot of interference that's coming in. You know, eight of wands. It could be family, friends, what have you. People just coming in with their two cents. It could just be um, a lot of mixed messages that you're also getting. Right, Taurus? Um, from your person. And they're kind of like... It seems like they themselves, if they're representing with Nine of Wands, they themselves are at a really funny stage in their life where they're kind of like coming out of something really difficult, but it's still like the last hurdle. And so you're getting mixed messages. I think for some of you, Taurus, you may, you know, your person may have been telling you, yes, they care about you, they want to be with you, but then in reality, they're not making the moves towards you, right? And so this week, this issue comes up. Right. And it's time for you um, to, you know, to put your own boundaries in place so that you can uh, stop being kind of assaulted with all of these mixed messages and try to get to the heart of what the real communication is, what the real message is here. One more for you guys, Taurus. Ace of Cups, Queen of Swords and Knight of Swords. Wow. So some of you are... Definitely meeting a past life relationship, a soulmate connection, a love connection. Ace of Cups talks about a new outpouring of love. Um, and certainly if you if you are either you're embodying the Queen of Swords or the Knight of Swords, I want to say, Taurus, um, you've kind of met your match. I want to say that you're Queen of Swords, but in any case, it could be either or, but you've met your match very much here, you know. Um, they're coming into you and you're like, yeah, come on in. I'm ready. You know, and it's like, you know, you've met somebody who is like your match mentally, your match in terms of energy. Right. Um, and it's just love. Right. It could be love at first sight. Um, and love at first sight often happens with past life relationships because this could certainly be a past life relationship for you. Um, a soulmate connection, you know, this could be the one. It's just because the cards are so harmonious, the connection. It's very fast. It's going to happen very fast. The conversation will be very fast. And the connection will be made very fast. Now, what the prognosis is for longevity, we don't know that yet. But the connection is certainly going to be made. And for some of you, this is going to happen this week. All right, this will be a scenario for some of you uh, in terms of what you encountered this August 11th to the 17th. And this is a great spread to end on because I love love at first sight. I love when anytime two people come together with somebody that they are so uh, compatible with. This is a high level of compatibility that, you know, the love just immediately starts pouring. And I, and I wish that for you. All right, Taurus. So this is your reading for August 11th to the 17th. If it resonated with you, please like, subscribe, and share. Um, <clears throat> but for right now, Taurus, you know how much I love you. You guys have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next week for the general weekly scenarios. Bye-bye.